In this final video on community interactions, we're going to close our discussion on the three main types by concluding with an interaction known as symbiosis. So we'll entitle this final community interactions flowchart, Community Interactions 3. And in this flowchart, we will be looking at symbiosis, which is a community interaction of uh, great notice for us because it's quite interesting in terms of its overall actions in the community that we study. So we'll call this symbiosis as a subtitle for this flowchart. So sim means together or the same or with each other and we're talking about a biological process. Biosis would mean a biological process and we can further define this word by stating the following. Our general definition of symbiosis will be the following. It's an intimate long-term so these are key ideas here. It's an intimate, long-term, long-term relationship between two or more species. So it's an intimate, long-term relationship between two or more species. So of course, two or more would be S double P. And this is going to play itself out in the fact that it's going to it certainly involve and it involves one species um, living in or on another. Living in or on the other species that's in question in this symbiotic relationship. So in symbiosis, we're going to have this long-term relationship. It's a close relationship. And it's going to be this idea of living in or on another species. This can be seen in three main forms in nature. And we'll look at those three main forms on this side of the flowchart. And this is where we're going to be looking at the plus minus, minus minus, minus plus, whatever situation that comes about in terms of the community interaction that we see. And this is, of course, community interactions, Roman numeral three. So the three main forms are the following. We have one form known as parasitism, something that you probably have heard of before. And parasitism is a plus minus relationship. It's a plus minus interaction between members of a community. There's also the idea of something called mutualism. Another term you've probably heard before, and this, because it's mutual, it's going to be a plus-plus interaction between two species. And finally, there will be one final term called commensalism, one final form of a community interaction that involves symbiosis. In commensalism, we do not have a plus-plus or a plus-minus or even a minus-minus. We actually have what is known as a plus-zero relationship and interaction between the species. We'll look at that as we move forward. So we'll begin with parasitism. This is when there's a clear benefit for one individual, and that one individual that's benefiting is the parasite. So we'll write that down. The parasite benefits in this symbiotic relationship. Two things living together, essentially, just like we stated in this subpart of our definition. The parasite benefits, that would mean that somebody has to get a minus. Somebody has to be harmed or negatively affected. That would be the host and the host will be harmed indefinitely by this parasite, mainly because the parasite is using the host for resources. And it's abusing the host specifically for those resources or access to them. But an interesting note is that the host is actually rarely going to be killed. Because guess what? If you kill the host, you have killed your spot in which you can live on or in and you can no longer benefit from a dead host. So you're going to suck the life, essentially, out of this host and toe the line between killing and keeping this host alive. That's the power of a parasitic relationship. And a classic example that's often seen in real life is heartworm, and that's a parasite that often shows, uh, shows itself in dogs. It's a very, very bad parasite, bad for the dog, good for the parasite, and the problem with this is that the dog gets more and more sick uh, the longer the parasite is there because we have an increased uh, parasitic benefit and an increased host harm the longer we have this parasite within the organism. 
So that's parasitism. Very clear that there's somebody benefiting and somebody not benefiting from this relationship, this living together relationship, this symbiotic relationship. In mutualism, we have the idea of both partners. So, of course, we have a symbiosis right now. So there are going to be two partners, two species. Both partners benefit so much so that they actually become dependent on each other and are dependent. So they need each other so much so that without each other, they cannot succeed in the environment. So depend on each other. Other. It's a mutually beneficial relationship in this situation. A classic example that we're actually going to be looking at in great detail in Bio 2, but mentioning for right now in Bio 1, is mycorrhizae. So this is the classic mutualistic example because it's seen all over the place. And it's not technically seen, but microscopically we know that mycorrhizae are all throughout the plant and fungi world. This is a mutualistic relationship between plant and fungi. So we'll say that this is between fungi and that these fungi will be at the roots, the fungi roots, and also... Um, between fungi and the roots of some plants. So fungi plus roots of plants. So there's going to be these fungi spread throughout the roots of the plants. How is one going to benefit and how is the other going to benefit because we have a plus-plus relationship? Well, the roots are going to provide something. The roots of the plant, this area of life, this living on, is going to provide roots, provide organic molecules, and organic molecules are, of course, great because they're very easy to use and convert to energy for growth. So the mycorrhizae, the fungi, will be quite happy. The roots provide organic molecules, whereas the fungi will return the favor and provide some minerals for the plant to grow. And the plant needs these minerals for its own growth. What happens is, and this is a critical, critical mutualistic relationship, when we start utilizing pesticides or um, plant killers ineffectively or too much, we start interrupting mycorrhizae relationships between fungi and plants and we throw the whole system, the whole community out of whack because we have this intimate relationship, long-term relationship between fungi and plants and if we mess this up, we mess up a lot above the food chain, let's say, and that's something we'll get to when we look at trophic levels in a later video. So mutualism is a plus-plus relationship, and we'll conclude with commensalism, which is a plus-zero relationship. So there's a plus-slash-zero. This is when one organism benefits, so that's the plus, and on the other side of the equation, the other part of this relationship, the other is neither harmed nor benefits. Other, neither, harmed, or benefited. So they don't get anything out of this, and one part of the organism does get something out of this. The classic example for this um, are tropical trees and their epiphytes. So tropical trees will be one organism plus epiphytes, which is the other organism that's within this commensalism relationship. What happens is epiphytes are these small plants that are laden throughout the bark of these large tropical trees. And what we see is the following. The epiphytes attach to the bark, so epi attaches to bark. So that's our living on or in relationship. And they do not obtain, uh, they use this bark, uh, but do not obtain any of the food or water from the tree. So they don't take anything away. They're not a parasite. Do not obtain food or water from tree. So it's definitely not parasitic. This is the idea of zero. Neither harmed nor benefited. But what does happen? Somebody has to benefit. And the epi, the epiphyte, will benefit because this is what's going to happen. The epiphyte benefits in this relationship, this commensalism relationship, by getting more light. This is something that will not affect its bark host, its tropical tree host. It'll just gain access to more light. And if it gains access to more light, it's going to have access to uh, a bit more, let's say, of the resources and thus more nutrients. 
more nutrients, so N-U-T-S for nutrients, that wash down, that just happen to wash down the tree as excess, let's say, and thus the epiphyte is not going to be bothering the tree. It's just getting the, the last bits of these nutrients, the last bits of water that the tree no longer needs. So that's why we have a plus zero relationship. Overall, we have now completed the community interactions that we see within community ecology. We looked at the idea of uh, competition, which was a minus minus relationship. Then we looked at predation, which was a plus minus relationship. And then finally, we've concluded with symbiosis, which can be a variety of plus, minus, plus, plus, and plus zero relationships as defined and noted by this long-term relationship that involves living in or on another species.